anti slob, anti slob, anti slob. Now, um, this reaction video we're doing today, um, it's from a two couple couple individuals, right? We got this one guy being interviewed, name is Matt Cox. And um, he is somebody who uh, was involved in some mortgage fraud, right? Uh, he got caught up doing a little mortgage scheme. Um, and I was gonna show y'all the video where he explained that, but it's a, it's a Vlad TV interview. And Vlad TV don't really, uh, you know, mess around with people, uh, you know, reacting to his content. You know, he'll get, you, get you, your, 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 your page shut down, the video shut down. So I'm just gonna have to just, uh, you know, summarize what um, I seen or what I heard, the information, you know. So basically, uh, Matt Cox got sentenced to 26 years in prison for doing his mortgage fraud. And you say 26 years for mortgage fraud. Yeah, he ran up a tremendous check doing this, right? Uh, you know, uh, I want to say he pocketed it. They allege um, $6 million uh, uh, himself. But the whole scheme was like a $55 million scheme all together in totality. And then he went on a run for like three years, was getting plastic surgery, you know, just moving all around, you know, just like on some straight James Bond type stuff, right? And um, he went on this platform called Fresh Out. Now, Fresh Out platform is ran by an ex-con named Big Herc, and he interviews people that were locked up and then they came home and he likes for them to tell their story, he asks them questions so that he can teach his audience a lesson from that person's, uh, you know, past criminal uh, time. Now, what makes this uh, reactionable and what made me want to react to this um, is the uh, the conversation between these two men. You got one big hurt where he has the position to where you know, he lived by the cold, you don't tell anybody, you go, as he says, take your medicine, you do the crime, you do the time. Now, Matt Cox, on the other hand, he, um, as like I said in that Vlad TV interview, he detailed on how he cooperated from the beginning to the ninth inning uh, when he got caught. But unfortunately for him, you know, when he was cooperating, uh, the DA, district attorney, was just like, ah, you know, this information really isn't, you know, much. Or um, it, it didn't result in anybody getting a significant amount of time. So they didn't give him a downward departure. They didn't give him any time reduction on his sentence. So he basically just told her, uh, he just gave him, he just, this was telling to be telling. Then he didn't get anything out of it. So um, the guy, uh, Big Hurt, I guess he didn't even know that about Matt, Matt Cox. You know, he didn't do his research. He didn't know that he was a, a, a cooperator. So they had like a little bit of a heated exchange and again, what I really want to highlight on is there are two different stances that they have on this particular subject. And I'm going to break that down. And I'm going to let you guys uh, get my opinion on what I think about what these two men said. So um, again, it's going to be a teachable moment. Uh, we're not just reacting to this just to be reacting. Everything that I react to is something that I want to try to uh, give you guys to learn from so that we can take something away from the conversation, apply it to ourselves and become better. That's what this channel is all about. So, uh, of course, I'm going to um, um, convey that and uh, articulate that and give you guys the value. So let's get right into this clip and we can start reacting to this. People and go home. Yeah, I, I think the last question was uh, um, was basically that you get caught and then, you know, you go out, you do a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, crime or something and you get caught and then you tell on everybody to try and get out of it. That was basically, I think, your, yeah, your yeah. point. Yeah, I, I mean, just the vice, because a lot of people, especially today, man, I mean, there's, uh, there, there's no, people feel there's no consequence. There's always a way out. And if you're reaping the benefits of something, I mean, it's like you have to realize, and what I try to stress to people when I tell my story is that it wasn't the bank robbery. It was the mentality I have. So if I were to try to tell a young person what would kind of, you know, dissuade them from taking the path I did, what other options? Yeah, that, that, and that's what, uh, as y'all can see, that's what Big Hurt, this is, that's Big Hurt, this uh, black guy. That's what he likes to do. He likes to, uh, you know, kind of draw up a, a hypothetical, will you? And he likes to, um, 
try to give his perspective to pass down to the next generation. Like, hey, you know, this and third, and you go down that path. This is kind of how you should approach the situation. And he gives his own personal anecdotal on what he thinks that a person should do if they are in that uh, situation. So we're going to get into the uh, specifics on what these two men, um, you know, what they what they both think about a particular uh, situation of that. You know, you get into some type of trouble. What should you do at that point? Should you become a snitch and cooperate with authorities or should you, uh, as they say, take your medicine and uh, do your time? You know, you got it. You got to somehow put it in the sense that, man, at the end of the day, you have to own up to all this stuff and you can't just keep, you know, saying that, hey, I can always get out of it and throw 10 other people under the bus or whatever the case may be, because you're the one who and who who made that choice to live up and enjoy whatever it is you were doing and, and, and take part in that. So I'm saying like advice wise, how would you explain that? And given the opportunity, would you say that, hey, you know what? At the end of the day, there's certain things you have to own up to. I mean, I think that I, I think I owned up. Look, the difference is owning up to it, in my opinion, owning up to it and saying nothing and not cooperating with the authorities to clear their case. Man. <laughs> oh, man, I'm not trying to laugh. All right. So he got he got right into it, into the nitty gritty. You know, he you heard what he said. Um, cooperating and helping the authorities clear their case. Now, I've never even, I've never even heard anybody use that type of, uh, that type of verbiage when explaining um, cooperating with authority. So I, I thought that was kind of interesting, clear their case. But um, we're gonna hear exactly, like I say, he's gonna finish, uh, you know, his, uh, his, his outline. This, this is Matt Cox right here. And make sure that everyone's brought to justice, mm. you know, I think that's two different things. I know what I did. I absolutely know what I did. I've, I'm more than willing to say this is exactly what I did. See, when he said he knows what he did, like I said, I wish I could play that Vlad TV interview um, when, he, when he talked about how he did cooperate with the, uh, with the authorities on multiple occasions. And uh, that, that's his stance. And then only thing I can say about this Matt Cox guy that I do respect is that he, he, he said that from the beginning to the ninth inning, when he was incarcerated, and like I said, I wish I could play this for you guys so you could hear it, but Vlad TV, I'm not about to be messing with him with uh, these copyright strikes. But he said that when he was incarcerated, that he would let all of the inmates know. Like, they would joke out with him, like, oh, when you getting out, Cox? He said he would tell them, well, I don't know, one of you fuckers tell me about, sorry, because one of you, one of you guys tell me about a body that you got hidden somewhere. I may be going getting out tomorrow because I'm gonna tell on you. So he would let it be known that uh he was, you know, he 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 snitched, he will snitch. Don't tell him any information because he's going to tell on you to get his time reduced. Right? And the reason I say I respect that is because most of you guys will lie to each other. Oh man, I never tell. Man, oh man, you my bro. I did all this BS. Knowing that as soon as you get that fire set to your behind, you're going to tell. You're going to tell. At least this guy is, is being mad enough and he's owning up to it and he's letting you know, hey, don't tell me anything because if you do, I'm going to tell the authorities and clear their case, as you just said, and you're going to jail. Let's, uh, let's finish here, Mr. Cox. Um, you know, and how it affected people, just, just like, you know, we were talking. So... So, so saying, I'm saying, you're saying own it up, but I'm saying as far as advice, but like you're saying brought to justice, how, if you got caught and this guy's over here is still getting paper and, but he, you maybe did a business with him, but you don't actually, he's not actually the one who got caught, but he's enjoying his life and it has nothing to do with you. Now, by you telling on him, is that being brought to justice? Who, because who, who's, this is a, a hypothetical person. I'm talking about like a third person. If you were telling somebody else from the street and they, and, and, and I want to stop this. It's funny that he broke up that hypothetical. Because that hypothetical is exactly what Matt Cox did. Like, if you guys need some time, go to Vlad TV and type in Matt Cox. And that's exactly what he did. Like I said, he said that he was on the yard 
and he was he got kind of close with some guy they walk in the yard and this guy looks at him and says can i trust you and matt cox looked at him and said probably not and he proceeded to tell him some incriminating information matt cox said that he sat on that information for a month uh talked to his attorney attorney's like hey how you doing I'm doing all right. He said, the attorney's like, is there anything going on in there? Anything you need to tell me? And he said, he thought about it like, well, you know what? It is something that I need to tell you. He explained that confession that he got from that guy on the yard. The uh, His attorney was like, well, hold, give me a second. The attorney explains uh, what he told him to the uh, pros prosecutor. The prosecutor calls him in, asks him to pretty much give them the information that he got from that guy. He gives it to him. Arrests were made, and the guy that told him it originally was upset. But it's like, how can you be upset when he told you, I wouldn't trust me with any incriminating information? You tell, you still tell him the information. So let's 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 finish this. They got caught, and you're saying, you know, to own up to it and bring somebody to justice. But this person over here, who's a neighbor. Maybe, for instance, you, you know, they might have did something, but it's totally unrelated to what you got going. If you tell on them, is that is that considered being brought to justice? And, and for your benefit, because it helps you get a downward departure? Well, there's I, I don't see that there's any reason for me not to get a downward departure since the person's the person's getting in trouble anyway. I think a decent... He didn't get in trouble, though. I'm saying hypothetically, if that person didn't get in trouble, he's enjoying their life, and you go... Yeah, I, I kind of see what, uh, what Big Herc is saying. He's saying, basically... Would you just tell on somebody that, let's just say, like with him, he was doing mortgage fraud, and then that other guy had a whole separate case, had nothing to do with mortgage fraud, it wasn't on your um, on your case, Set, totally separate situation. Would you tell on that person to get your sentence reduced? Well, it's, it's funny that, like I said, that Big Herc is asking him that because that's exactly what Matt Cox did. Like, he's already done that. So, I mean, I don't understand... Um, I guess his reaction because he got upset as you, as you guys are going to see when he basically says like, I mean, I'll let you guys see what he said. I'm not even, we, we'll, we'll see this together. Go and decide to throw them into your mix. Now they're under investigation even when they weren't even on the radar. Do you feel that's justified? So you're saying someone is committing a crime. They're I'm not kidding, but it's, a crime doesn't matter. It's a, it could be everybody, somebody could be committing a crime, but he has nothing to do with you. You got caught. Right. He's living his life. Now, whether he's hustling or not, you might have had an assumption, but you now point the finger at him because maybe at a dinner a dinner uh, a, a, a engagement, he mentioned something, and you were like, fuck, I'm in a hot position. So, you know, let me tell on uh, old position. Ted here. I remember, Ted, remember, told me that one time he did this and that. Would you say that that's justified, and would you tell the person on the street to tell on Ted, even though Ted didn't get caught, you did? I mean... I know the answer that you want, and I know the position I've been in. So y'all hear what he said? I know the answer that you want, but I know the position that I've been in because he was in that exact position, and he talked about it on Vlad TV. He talked about how he was walking that yard. That guy told him that incriminating evidence, and he went back and told that. So, I mean, he's already been there, done that. So, like I said, I don't know uh, what... Big Herc was trying to like get at was he just trying to like get him to uh, repeat what he said on Vlad TV? But he, like I said, I've seen that interview on Vlad TV and he already explained that he doesn't have a problem telling on anybody. You and told I on know, Ted. Bro, I got 26 years for filling out some paperwork. I don't care. Wow. He said, I got 26 years for filling out some paperwork. That's a lot of time for filling out some paperwork. A lot of time filling out some paperwork. Wow. So, uh, I mean, I'm going to wait until I finish up my final thoughts. I'm gonna, let's let this play a little bit more. Give a fuck about Ted. Ted don't give oh, a fuck you, about me. Then I'm a scumbag. I'm yeah, a scumbag. Yeah, that's, yeah, Rat, yeah. scumbag, snitch. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm not fucking. <laughs> Whoa, he, going, he is going off. Man, say, I don't care what y'all call me. It is what it is. And doing 
all my fucking so, uh, so basically you're years? saying that nobody can really be your friend at the end of the day because you would be a piece of shit to that person you're saying that because ted was a good dude you ate at his house his kids played with your kids see now i don't know like we'll see now big hurt i think he's kind of like adding things into this hypothetical now where where does all that come in at now he's your friend you ate at his house you got, our kids know each other i don't really think that's kind of fair to be adding in all these variables after the fact to the hypothetical to try to prove your point more I mean, I don't understand, you know, what you don't understand. Like, he already told you, he is telling, man. He said he don't care about being labeled a rat, a scumbag, a snitch. He, he's not doing 26 years of filling out some paperwork. That's what he said. And um, what this, this is kind of like what I really want you guys to understand. Um, when somebody tells you who they are explicitly, believe them the first time. Somebody tells you, hey, man. I'm te I'll tell on you if you ever give me some information against you. If you ever do a crime in front of me, I am going to tell on you. Don't be that idiot on that yard that still confessed your crimes to a guy who's telling you that he's a rat. He's already cooperated. He will cooperate in the future. I mean, that, that doesn't make any sense. And then secondly, you shouldn't be out here committing crimes. You know, there's so many things that you can get off into that's legal. Well, you don't even have to go that route. You know, you got trades that you can get into early. You got a uh, 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 stock market that you can get off into. You got cryptocurrency now that you can get off into. You have all of these new opportunities that you can uh, make a good way and a good lifestyle for yourself where you don't have to go down the crime route. There are more and more legal avenues of opportunity that is afforded to you young men that you don't have to take the criminality route. You know, this is, this is an age... It's never been this wide open. It's never been this wide open for opportunities for young men to acquire wealth at an early age as it is right now. You know, uh, all it takes is a little bit of research, a little bit of time, and you can actually, you can, you can, you can uh, uh, absolutely change your situation. That time that you're going to try to take to get that false narrative on how to be a criminal, you can take that same time and effort on how to do something legit. And that time that you're taking to be a criminal, what are the sources that you are using to teach you how to be a criminal? Let's just be honest about that. What are you, what are you doing to actually learn how to be a criminal? You're watching these, these fictional movies, right? You're listening to this cat music to learn how to be a criminal. So you really don't even have a, a pure guide on how to do said behavior. You have a false narrative, so you're setting yourself up for failure by even going down that path, right? There are no mentors to show you how to be a perfect criminal because those said mentors are probably people that are horrible criminals. They've been locked up. They've been caught. They've been snitched on. They're snitching. So that is a path that's leading to nowhere. And I'm telling you what I know. You don't even want to go down that path. You don't want to be on the fresh out uh, couch talking about how you were locked up, how you had to tell on people to get out, or how you had to take your medicine, as he would say, and do all of your time to come home to be a stand-up person. No, you don't even want to go down that path. Like I said, there are so many different things you can get that you can get into that's legal that will acquire you a lot of wealth. Put your head down, do the work. Stay consistent, stay dedicated, and be inspired to acquire what you desire. That's all you have to do, you know. And uh, when you're doing the right thing, doors are going to open up for you. The right people are going to come into your life to help and guide you to become uh, what you need to be in this world. You know, add value to the world, add value to yourself, and stay on that path. Uh, I let this play a little bit more, but you know, we pretty much got the gist of what's going on. Big Herc is all about. If you do that crime, you do that time. You don't tell on anybody. Matt Cox is like, I'm going to do that crime. I ain't doing that time. I did. I got 26 years of filling out some paperwork. I'm telling F Ted. He doesn't care. You're saying that you would tell on Ted. So really, at the end of the day, you have no friends. You're only off yourself. You have no loyalty. You get <laughs> caught. Yeah, because you're saying Ted, he was living his life. You guys used to go to pool parties together. But you would throw him under the bus because you got caught up and Ted didn't get caught because he wasn't involved in your thing. So you're saying nobody can really be your friend then. Because at the end of the day, it's all about you. You would throw anybody under the bus to save your ass. 
That's what you're saying, bro. Man, that, that, hey, that silence right there, that was kind of uh, kind of funny because, because normally Matt Cox is like sharp. He's like right there. So that that that's, that eerie silence was kind of funny. I thought that was that was a little a little uh, a little humorous. Bro, you would do it. It could be your mom. It could be your sister. If you could get out, you said you would throw Ted. He he was cool with you. You guys hung out together. This is a, a horrible, a horrible no win scenario. For no, me because I'm just. You oh yeah, we're done now. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we're done. We're done with these guys now. And, uh, oh yeah, we see uh, the position that the two guys are taking, and uh, like I said, my position is, uh, like I told you guys, don't even commit the crimes, right? Because you got people like you got people out there like Matt Cox. There's a lot of people out there like that, but I'm not gonna say no, not like Matt Cox. There's a lot of people that think like Matt Cox but act like Big Hurt, right? They're gonna say, oh man, you gotta take your medicine. You gotta do that crime, man. Nobody say nothing. And they got the mindset of Matt Cox and they're already getting down on you. They're already telling on you. So you guys gotta be careful out there. You know, you 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 dummies that wanna commit crimes. Because you got people, you know, that that's gonna act like they're gonna say, Oh yeah, man, you my dog, you gang, we brothers, man. I'd never tell on you. And they'll be the first ones to tell on you. Very first ones. So like I say, don't commit crimes. Stay out of that lifestyle. Don't even go down that path. Because if you do, and you got the mindset that you're not going to tell on about tell on anybody, well, you're just waiting around to get told on. You are just waiting around to get told on because it's going to happen. There's no way around it. So, uh, yeah, guys. Uh, like I say, only thing I got to say is that I do have respect for Matt Cox for being so forward on his position right you have to respect that he's letting you know i am going to tell on you you're going to jail i'm telling i respect that he's giving you the option do you want to you know mess with me or do you not want to mess with me but this is who i am i don't have respect for people that say that they don't do that type of stuff but behind closed doors that mouth was just clapping and flapping but uh yeah uh Broke that down. Hopefully you guys can, you know, kind of, you know, get some value from that and just learn, you know, just don't even go down that path because it's a, it's a no road that leads nowhere. Dead end. Dead end road. But, uh, yeah, man, y'all, y'all let me know what y'all think about that in the comment section. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And as always, we anti sloppy, lazy, obese, bad behavior. Peace out. Anti slobs, anti lazy, trying to be the best me that I can be. It's up to me. I'm taking all accountability. I just gotta keep going hard to get the win. Again and again, no pain, no gain. This ain't just a diet plan. This a whole life change. It's a whole life choice. Listen to my voice. You can tell I ain't playing. I'm trying to be the best I can be. That's my goal. So I'm gonna go, go, go. Yeah, go, go, go. Anti slob. Anti slob. Anti slob. Anti slob. Anti slob.